HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from the HCAM Contested Races debate. We'll take you to the Relay for Life Students vs. Teachers basketball game. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider and we have the latest Hiller Sports Report. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Hopkinton Women's Club have a new website. You can find the group at hopkintonwomensclub.org. I talked with the designer of the website, who is a student at Hopkinton High School. Uh, I chose an elective class, uh, web page design, uh, at school. And my teacher, Mr. Mac Folland, uh, taught us how to use WordPress. As I designed uh, different websites with WordPress and coding, uh, Previously, uh, in past years, uh, Mr. McFollin told me that uh, he can uh, send me a customer and I can work on a website to get more experience, get involved in uh, real business and learn more about programming. Uh, so that's how I got involved uh, in Hopkinton Women's Club website uh, and setting a meeting, uh, designing a website like that. Uh, I had a lot of time uh, for uh, designing the website, but it took about a month to design the website the way that they wanted, with the help of Mr. Matt Foylan, definitely. I've done uh, very different, I designed uh, different websites previously in past years, but that was the first time I actually met a real customer to work with and uh, get more experienced in real world. Oh yes, I'm looking for software developer and web development in the future. Oh, okay, I like that. After a rough April weather-wise, Hopkinton Hillers baseball and softball finally played some home games. Here is a look at the home openers. On Tuesday, May 1st, Hopkinton Hillers softball took on Westwood in their home opener. The Hillers put up three runs in the first inning. And there is ball four. That is going to drive in a run for the Hillers. Emily Whalen comes around from third to score, and it's one to nothing Hopkinton. And that is going to be a walk to Jordan Chevery. Excuse me for the mispronunciation there, it was spelled wrong. And that'll drive in another Hiller's run as Alyssa McIntyre comes around to score. Jordan Chevery at second, or excuse me, first, Belanci at second. That is going to be a walk and another run. Three nothing Hillers. Hopkinton added five more in the second inning. Judd deals. And this is hit in the air over to left center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Katie Hawley around to score. Sivo is going to come around. And it's a 7-0 lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. A two RBI hit for Bella Ansi. And three more in the third inning. Loaded up the bases once again for the Hillers. As this one's tattooed up the middle, that'll drop in for a hit. Emily Whalen around the score. Following her is Katie Holly. It may be a third run here. Here comes Emma Murphy, the throw in, not in time. And it's a three RBI base hit from Jill Cedia. 11 to nothing, Hopkinton. The Hillers girls would get the Mercy win with another run in the bottom of the sixth. Hopkinton takes down Westwood 12 to nothing and improves to four and one on the season. Westwood falls to 0 and five overall. Katie Holly was great from the pitcher's circle, giving up no runs, two hits, and striking out a pair. Hiller's baseball took care of business against Westwood in their home opener. 
Hopkinton won the game 2-1. Brendan Kelly pitched a solid five innings, giving up two runs and one hit. Andrew Sirocco pitched two clean innings to close out the game and grab the W. Hillers won the game via a walk-off in the bottom of the seventh. Tommy Ambersoni got the winning hit and RBI. The Hillers followed up with a second straight home walk-off win Wednesday, May 2nd. After trailing 4-1 heading to the bottom of the seventh, the Hillers rallied and played it a walk-off run in the bottom of the ninth to take the 5-4 victory over Norton and improve to five wins and three losses on the season. A big thank you to Richard Sosicki for the excellent pictures. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have highlights from the HCAM contested races debate. We'll take you to the Relay for Life high school teachers versus students basketball game. And Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. A whole lot more on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. This week on HCAM, the yeah, EHOP so Spotlight Series continues so those, those by getting us ready for town meeting with Know Your Vote. We're talking about on these slides. Um, and then a turf field project is part of a capital budget, and there are several different ways that those can be funded. Um, this year, the determination was made that um, if this is approved at, at town meeting, it would be funded within the levy limit. That's not within the school operating budget. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, Hopkinton High School teachers and students met up on the basketball court to help raise funds to benefit the Relay for Life and fight cancer. Here is a look at highlights from the fun-filled evening. So tonight we have the student versus teacher faculty basketball game. So we have the student team versus the faculty team and the winners get some t-shirts. It's going to be a big fundraiser. We've got concessions for people to buy and a relay store. It's going to be a lot of fun. People can come to support their favorite team. raising money for cancer research and for our big event on May 18th. Uh, are you expecting that the students are going to take down the teachers this year? Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> Last year I'm pretty sure the teachers yeah, won I by a decent the, amount. So the teachers have been winning the past couple yeah, years. Yeah, I hope yeah. The, teacher, or the students uh, come back to win this one.
This past week, HCAM hosted the town election contested races candidates debate. Here is highlights of a great evening of local government debate. One of the things that I really like is that the young adult area and the young adult librarian, she's, she's an electric person, she's really cool, and she's got these kids coming into the library in record numbers, and I encourage that, you know. It, it, it's just uh, phenomenal what she's done in there. The demographic is changing. The library has to change to keep up with that and be relevant and be a big part of it. Um, I'm currently on the board of directors for the Hoppington Historical Society. And um, I uh, know after five years quite a lot about what happens in, in among the board of directors. I, I think I would be a good candidate. I have a little grant work. Um, I wrote a, um, a grant for St. Andrew's Church for a bird and butterfly garden. I wrote a grant for the Hoppington Historical Society from the American Library Association for a uh, future of the library. So I enjoyed immensely serving on the Board of Health over the past year, and um, I think we had an incredibly productive year. Um, so we hired the new health director. Um, we passed two important regulations to help ensure the health and safety of the town, the plastic bag ban and the raising of the tobacco age. Um, I kind of feel like we're just getting started. Um, we have a lot of exciting things that are ongoing right now, and I would very much appreciate being reelected. So I'll ask that people vote for me on May 21st. I love education. It's my life. I, I think about it all the time. I, I think about trying to make the, the school day better for every child. Um, and I like getting my hands dirty. I like working hard on those things. And so if you think you want someone like that, I'd be very happy to represent you. I realized um, volunteering, my favorite things to do are to think sort of big picture and strategic, do strategic planning uh, and solve problems uh, in, within constraints. And I think the school committee has a number of problems, a lot of tight constraints. And I think as a committee, we can really work together and um, get creative and try to do the best we can to serve our kids. Um, I've been here for 15 years and um, raising my children and working full time. But um, now that they're a little bit older, I'm feeling um, like I have the, the available time to really devote to other activities. And um, this, is, uh, this is something that seems exciting to me and seems very interesting. And I believe I would um, give a good um, fresh perspective because um, I'm all about coming in with no agenda and listening to lots of different points of view before I draw conclusions. I think residential growth, uh, we've had a lot of recently and it's probably gonna slow down a bit because there's not as many huge uh, tracks to develop. Um, but what we really need to start working on is both encouraging more, um, more business development in town, more business growth, particularly over on South Street. Um, I had said the other night I was really encouraged to see that uh, Lake Pharma is bringing 100 jobs over there uh, by opening up a biologics facility. I think that's a, that's a wonderful addition to town. Um, and we should look to find more ways of doing that. One thing we did um, on Zach and the, the planning board endorsed was uh, opening up the hotel overlay to try and bring in a hotel, uh, which so far the town hasn't been successful with, but that would be a great addition as well. I would, I would also like the ability to look at these zoning bylaws and to look at where we can plan, plan for more growth and where we can get that positive economic um, um, tax incentive um, to business, whether they're big pharma, whether they're um, a museum, um, if, if placed correctly, I think it could be a wonderful thing. Um, there's just so so many wonderful little um, I, things happening in Hopkinton, and um, and I think they can come together. And I'd like to look at the master plan and recreate it or revision it in in, in where it's possible. Um, so I, I just would ask for your vote. Um, I would enjoy the opportunity, um, and I would be dedicated for um, to the to, to the planning board and its meetings. New voice change, fresh ideas. That seems to be the slogans that are going out there when I'm hitting the streets, talking to uh, the residents of this town, talking to business owners, talking to fire, talking to police people. It's new change in ideas, and that's what I would bring. My experience as a union negotiator and uh, my education and hopefully passion the bar soon becoming a lawyer, uh, I would bring a different look to the selectmen. 
you know, not everybody has to be a CEO of a company. I think you need those different ideas, different approaches, and just different, just different, everything's different. So uh, bringing fresh ideas, I've been uh, part of this town for five years. Uh, I just built a house in town, I'm here to stay. Uh, I like the small town culture feel that this place has. Uh, I'm from the city, but coming here, you know, I would never leave now. This is my home and I'm happy to call it home. Uh, I enjoy this kind of dialogue. Uh, I thought tonight was like, kind of like a selectman meeting. We went back and forth a little bit. That's good. That's healthy. That's what it needs to be. Uh, and I think we do it in a way that's respectful and uh, productive for the entire community. So uh, hopefully that will continue with whoever gets elected. Uh, you know, Hopkinton's uh, a great community. It's a wonderful community. I've raised my five kids here and I've spent a lot of time in local government here. And uh, we've got a transition year going on with a lot of folks stepping off the school committee. A bunch, a couple of people could possibly step off the board of selectmen. And there's a there's a, a, a concern about the knowledge base and the historical perspective that people could bring to meetings and to decision making in town. And uh, I'm running for this fourth and final term to offer that experience and historical perspective. And uh, with the support of the residents of Hopkinton, uh, I'd be happy and honored to serve that fourth and final term. And I'd appreciate your vote on Monday, uh, May 21st. Thank you. I think that my skills as a, as a problem solver, uh, my skills as an attorney, and uh, everything that comes with that would help to bring everyone, to, uh, help to bring, those, uh, bring a solution to some of these issues, or at least assist. Um, the town is also facing a number of issues with regard to growth and the new face. And what I really want to do is I want to bring all the new faces together uh, so that we can all share in this wonderful community. I really want to thank both Brian and Patrick for being here tonight, and as well as for HCAM. Um, it's been fantastic uh, talking to both of you, and uh, great meeting both of you through, throughout this whole campaign. Um, I feel as though I've made some friends here, and uh, I think at the end of the day, we, we're all neighbors. So no matter how this turns out, we're going to be good. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, May 4th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Hopkinton Town Clerk Connor Deegan, talking about the upcoming town meeting and town elections on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. You download the app? Yep. So, okay, I'm going into Google. Okay. All right. How do I this spell it? Live. How do v -O -A -T -Z, I spell it? V-O-A-T-Z. 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 And you can actually even just, there's actually um, guides and user manuals if you actually go to hopkintonma.votes.com. So On Monday, May 7th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod takes a tour of the many monuments around the Hopkinton Common on a new episode of Senior View. The three center panels for World War II and the Korean conflict, and then in the center, um, in, in grateful appreciation to the sons and daughters of Hopkinton who served their country and a list of the casualties in both of those that, that war and conflict. Should we read the names? Okay. Family members are watching. And at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting will air live on HCAM TV, as well as airing live on May 8th and May 9th at 7 p.m. On Friday, May 11th at 4 p.m., the Class of 2019 Junior Prom Grand March will air live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Boys Baseball vs. Holliston and the Hillers Girls Softball vs. Westwood games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, Thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.
Each person must identify oneself. Each person. This past Monday night, the Hopkinton Board of Health hosted two public hearings. The first public hearing was to consider adoption of a reduction in single-use plastic checkout bags. The regulation bans single-use plastic checkout bags at any retail or grocery store within the town of Hopkinton. Yeah, I think on, on some levels, we're sort of behind a lot of other communities as far as like uh, a lot of these ocean communities. So, for example, um, my sister and brother-in-law live on Block Island and they have recently banned plastic straws and also balloons. They're not allowed to release balloons at weddings and stuff. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, and well, the reason with that, they don't mind regular balloons, but helium-filled balloons, they go up in the air and they land in the ocean. And my brother-in-law is actually a professional fisherman, so he said, yeah, they show up in my nets. Um, so, you know, something as simple as plastic bags, it's really a first step, I think, towards doing the right thing. After no protest at the public hearing, the Board of Health voted unanimously to pass the regulation. To close the hearing for a vote. Do I have a second? Second. All right. What? No, I said all right. Motion to approve the regulation. Oh, well, that would be the second. So I'll move to approve the regulation as written. Thank yes. You. Second. Okay. So there we have it. There we have it's it. Done. It's done. It's done. The motion passes. We're the Board of Health will be enforcing authority to ensure that all retail and grocery store businesses within Hopkinton comply with the regulation. Fines will be administered for violations, $100 for the first violation, $200 for the second violation, and $300 for the third violation. The regulation is expected to go into effect January 1, 2019. The second Board of Health public hearing discussed increasing the purchase age of smoking and tobacco products from 18 to 21. The proposed regulation also includes non-tobacco nicotine delivery products such as electronic cigarettes and nicotine vaporizers. Several residents spoke in favor of the proposed regulation. Okay. I'm in fifth grade and moved from Connecticut. In August 2016, last year in my fourth grade health class, I learned that Hopkinton is not on the tobacco point on this. After that class, I came home and went and wrote a letter to our town and selectmen asking for support of getting Hopkinton on the tobacco point on this. As you may know, the selectmen invited me to their meeting. I shared my letter there. They supported looking into making this happen as follow-up chair, the Board of Health is the place to start. I am here today because I believe that is important to our town. Tobacco is not good for your health and other people's health. I learned that kids who start smoking at a very young age do stick with it. And I think that we should all be 21 and older to buy tobacco, but hope that no one will ever buy, want to buy tobacco and make people's health at risk from smoking. It can make anyone sick and get lung cancer. Please help thinking get on the Tobacco 21 list and please try getting this law passed in Hopkinton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Logan. Thank you. That Thank was you. extremely well written and I appreciate your input tremendously and having you know two teenagers myself I see this and it's not so much the cigarettes as it is the e-cigarettes the e it's the jeweling um, it's become a massive problem and every town around us with the exception of Milford all of our other neighboring towns have all gone to 21 so what has happened Hopkinton is now the place to go everyone knows go to mobile in Hopkinton on 85 it's right off the highway they're gonna sell to you if you're underage so as soon as I heard that as a parent of two teenagers um, and since it's 18 and so many of the high school kids are 18 you actually have this whole secondary market going on at the high school now where you have seniors buying up the stock at you know at the local gas station and selling them to other kids in the high school and I do think the two things here what was missing in our law was anything around vaping or e-cigarettes yeah. It was only old tobacco transmission, so we've amended, not only is the age raised from 18 to 21, but the regulation is amended 
to include those non-tobacco products. Mm -hmm. So it's a twofer. And it was then passed unanimously by the Board of Health. We've heard from everyone that we're going to hear from. The proposal also adds all non-tobacco nicotine delivery products to current tobacco regulation and laws in Hopkinton. The date the regulation will go into effect was amended to July 1st, 2018. Is it a bylaw or regulation? I'm regulation. Sorry. regulation. Approve the regulation um, as amended and rewritten to include non-tobacco products and raising the age to 21, mm -hmm. um, effective July 1, 2018. I second that. Fantastic. Fantastic. I, I. Excellent. The mispronunciation there was spelled wrong. And that'll drive it another Hiller's run as Alyssa McIntyre comes around to score. Jordan Chevry at second, or excuse me, first, Belanci at second. That is going to be a walk and another run. 3 nothing Hillers. Hopkinton added five more in the second inning. Jeff deals. And this is hit in the air over to the left center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Katie Hawley around to score. Sivo is going to come around. And it's a 7-0 lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. A two RBI hit for Bella Ansi. And three more in the third inning. Loaded up the bases once again for the Hillers. As this one's tattooed up the middle, that'll drop in for a hit.